What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to break down what's going on with the overall market, what you should be watching for as time progresses. I'm also going to break down some new catalysts that could affect the market going into Tuesday, what's happening with the market for this week, and how all of this stuff could affect Tesla as we have some important levels to be discussing. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. So anyways, let's break down what's happening to Tesla. Let's talk about what's happening to the market and etc. Looking at Tesla, we had a somewhat flat day going into Friday's. Tesla was barely up 0.3%. We saw this thing dip quite a bit below 230 before the buyers stepped in and defended it because they wanted to get this thing to close above the daily 200 EMA. So Tesla is not necessarily... Uh, extremely weak but it's not extremely strong either we're just kind of flat right now and i think that we might see tesla maintain this price action for an extended period of time before we get a very big move after nvidia's earnings but i do want to warn everyone that later on i'm anticipating that there's going to be a healthy pullback in the markets i think it may happen going into this week if not by early next week and then i think that there's going to be a very bullish december after that I just want to be clear that this could affect Tesla to some extent. That's why I'm going to break this down in just a couple of minutes. But let's first talk about the things affecting the market and the news. So right now, as a reminder, we have the three-month and the six-month bill auctions coming out at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. This might cause some volatility, so watch that very carefully. And that's pretty much it for Monday. Going into Tuesday, we have the FOMC minutes. And then don't forget the market is going to be closed for uh, Thursday because of Thanksgiving. So we have a very short week this week. But don't forget about the 11.30 a.m. volatility thanks to the three-month and six-month bill auctions. Then on top of this, the fear and greed index is now greedy. The greed is taking over the markets. People are starting to buy in like crazy. And this is going to be very important. So market momentum has turned greedy. And on top of this, uh, if you look at the put and call option positioning, right now we're on extreme greed mode. And this is something that could be a little risky right now as the market makers, at first they were going after the shorts, but they could start switching and start going after all the call buyers as we're starting to see more calls being bought on these indicators. This is very important. Uh, this is once again going to give us more insights about what's happening with the views right now. And we're seeing buyers turning more greedy, thinking the market's going to start pushing more and more. Other indicators are turning greedy, but this is the time to be very careful because when we start to see these indicators turn greedy, this is when the market could turn very soon. For earnings, we just have Zoom and just a couple of others for Monday, nothing too big, but then Tuesday is going to be massive because we have NVIDIA's earnings after the market closes and NVIDIA is going to shake the whole market. That's going to be very important, so make sure you watch this for Tuesday. When it comes to Tesla, I want to call out that the Cybertruck shows about 267 miles of range on the prototype, which is very, very good news for Tesla because the Cybertruck is still, uh, you know, a very, very big car right now that's in the minds of millions of investors and in people's minds. We're just a couple of days away from the big event that's going to be happening, which should be very interesting for Tesla. So regardless of what happens, at least for the next week or so, I am still very bullish for December, and I think that the Cybertruck is something big for Tesla. But I do want to note that for the shorter term, when you have new, new models for any EV company, they tend to start off very weak. They tend to uh, be very weak, at least for fundamentals. This could lead to some losses for Tesla. It's going to be very tricky to start scaling this up because Tesla has to reinvent the process to start uh, improving the production line. So in doing so, this is not like super bullish for their fundamentals or like their balance sheet in the very beginning. Uh, you, I want to just note that. But for the longer term, uh, I think that it's very bullish. And I think that Tesla will eventually make a profit on the Cybertruck. It's just going to take a while. Now, for the super short term, uh, regardless of their balance sheets, this could be very bullish as well once the launch event is out and all the hype is there. So it's very interesting to witness. But I just want to note that you shouldn't become a mega Tesla bull when it comes to their balance sheets and etc. in the very beginning because of the Cybertruck. This could kind of hold them back a little bit, but I'm still very confident in the long term of the Cybertruck, and I'm still confident Tesla's going to be fine uh, regardless of everything that's going on. There's also a lot of news about Elon Musk that's coming out. Uh, the, you know, the news just continues, and we could say whatever we want. At the end of the day, the news has been negative, and this could have a negative effect on Tesla. 
Uh, I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong about their views or what Elon Musk said was right or wrong. I'm not going to make a comment on that. Once again, I like to just keep politics or anything, any drama or anything that involves the topic uh, kind of like out of my mouth on this channel. But I do want to note that sometimes people can misspeak. Sometimes people don't truly mean uh, what ends up coming out of their mouths. And uh, it's really best to respect freedom, freedom of speech. But it's also important for you know, CEOs, investors, and very important figures to just be very careful with their tongues, right? It's also another important factor to remember. So that's kind of like my view of Elon Musk. I, I, I really admire him. I appreciate him. I respect him still. But I, I think that he has said things that could be misconstrued and uh, it's very important to take accountability for it, in my honest opinion. I think that he should be very careful with his words. That's just my view. So it is what it is. This news involving Elon Musk that has been coming out, I know I'm not showing it, but it's still out there. It could still affect Tesla, so you want to be very careful. Uh, but just know that don't forget about the contributing factors Elon Musk has also made and that he is, once again, proven to be one of the best CEOs on the planet. Uh, in terms of his capability, his performance, and what he has done. And I, I still have faith in the man. My, my view hasn't really changed on that. But once again, I still want him to just be very careful with what he says. And uh, I just want the best for everyone. I think we should just spread peace and love and just try not to be very divisive when it's unnecessary. All right. Anyways, when it comes to volume, Tesla has good volume, holding up quite decently, 143 million in volume. Uh, looking at the overall short volume, this has been going up as we're seeing Tesla becoming the second most shorted stock on the market right now. And I think that's going to lead to a short squeeze for the end of the year. But for the short term, there could be some more downside. The price risk ratio is dropping a bit as Tesla's losing some strength. And Tesla's looking not as strong as what it was looking like before. Mondays tend to be strong days for Tesla 53% of the time, but Tuesdays are when Tesla tends to slow down. And there could be a risk of that after NVIDIA's earnings. So we'll be watching to see how that goes. But nonetheless, the financial estimates are still strong for Tesla, and I'm very excited for what the future holds. Now, one of the issues with Tesla is that we have a potential inverse cup and handle forming. And in order for us to turn bullish, you want to see this thing kind of like break from this support and try to push back above 238. If you want to turn bearish, you want to see it lose 230, which happens to be where our daily 200 EMA happens to be. It's currently at 230 flat almost. So that's going to be critical support for Tesla. Tesla could drop below it. If it does drop below it, watch 226.5, very close to the 20 EMA on the daily. But we need to see Tesla continue to close above the 200 EMA on the daily charts or above 230 for it to be in a decent place. If we start closing below this, we could see a decline in Tesla. And this would just be another buying opportunity in my eyes. I just want to warn you about that. So what do I think Tesla is going to do? Uh, it depends on NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to have a big effect on the whole market and Tesla. Tesla might try to rebound towards this resistance right here, the supply zone, because you can see there was liquidity being grabbed down here and they're trying to like push it higher. And if it does try to break out, we could draw a trend line just like this, got a very simple trend line, and we'll see if this acts as a support zone for Tesla to try to continue pushing. But we might see a little rebound before this thing rejects. And I think, in my honest opinion, there's going to be a pullback coming to the markets for this Thanksgiving week, if not by next week. And I think that this is going to cause Tesla to drop a little bit. So it might try to like push to be grabbing some liquidity in this zone right over here, very close to 238. And then it might reject and come back down. We could close green for Monday, but by Tuesday slash Wednesday, things could start slowing down since it's going to be a short week with less volume. And I think that's this inverse cup and handle might start playing out. So we might see Tesla pull back a little bit more towards these lower imbalances. So I'm predicting that Tesla is going to likely try to rebound a little bit, then reject by either Monday later on into Monday, or if not by Tuesday, and start making its way back down to 230. That is my prediction for now. And it could even break below 230 to start breaking down for like 225 and lower levels like that. But that's what I'm predicting, guys. I, I just want to be as unbiased as possible. The news has been quite negative for Tesla with the overall uh, protests going on in parts of Europe, not to mention negative news involving Elon Musk. But 
Elon is going to prevail. Tesla will prevail for the long term, especially going to December. For NVIDIA, we have a potential and interesting structure right here. If we could break above 495 and hold this, there could be an attempt to get back to 500 right before earnings. And if we end up losing 490, I would turn more bearish, and I think it could start sinking for 485 and lower levels like that. Generally, before its earnings, we tend to see NVIDIA try to hold up nicely. So it's been pumping, approaching its earnings, as you could see on the chart. But... We'll be watching to see if we're forming some kind of flag or if we're going to try to uptrend from here because we're at support. On NVIDIA, we're getting very tight. We might see this thing pop a little bit, try to hold up temporarily, and then it could start cooling off as soon as Tuesday, if not after it's uh, the after earnings come out. So I'm anticipating that there might be some downside, but just to be safe, we'll have to wait and see. But for now, I think that NVIDIA, for the most part, is going to spend most of its time between 490 and 500. If we break 500, there could be a push up towards 508 to 510 plus, uh, but I'm not really counting on that for now. I, I think that the real move is going to happen after its earnings on Tuesday, and that's going to be much more impactful. So that's when the real move is going to come. Don't worry too much about Monday slash a part of Tuesday. Wait until after earnings come out. That's going to be after market close on Tuesday. All right, so look for a little pop in some sideways price action. Could be an attempt to go a little higher, but I, I I just don't really trust anything for now on the chart until we see earnings. So we'll just have to wait and see how earnings go, and it should hold up for the time being. Looking at SPY, we're basically stuck in our range. We're stuck between 452 as resistance and 448 as support. Here are the two possibilities I've mapped out right here. Basically, we could get one more pop and then a drop depending on NVIDIA's earnings, or we could just drop from here. That's how I see it happening. I anticipate a pullback is coming. Before we pull back, we either get one more pop up and then we pull back, or we could just pop, uh, I'm sorry, we could just drop from here. So how would you know if we're going to pop one more time? The answer is watch our resistance. If we shoot through 452, it means that we might see a pop for about this 455 to 456 range before we reject. If we lose 448, we're going to turn bearish, and that's when we're going to like start sinking. So I'm leaning a bit more in favor of this, where we might just start sinking from here, but it all depends on the levels. So make sure you watch the levels first before determining if we're going to get a pop and drop or if we drop from here. 452 is going to be key resistance. We've been stuck between 448 and 452 for three and a half trading days. Um, if we get a break above 452, there's going to be one last push up, and this is going to be the final leg up, most likely, before we get a healthy pullback, most likely. And if we end up just failing to break 452 and we just start sinking below 448, then we could start sinking from here, and we're going to turn bearish, at least for the time being. I'm going to actually change the colors of these because this is like the more bullish case, and this would be the more bearish case. So watch your levels. If we lose 448, I turn bearish. If we break 452, I think there's going to be one more push up before we end up dropping. But either way, I see a pullback coming, and I think it's going to happen as soon as this week because of the fact that it's a short week, there's less volume, and the NVIDIA's earnings could affect us alongside the FOMC minutes and other pieces of data. All right, so that's what I'm seeing for the charts, guys. Don't forget that SPY has a bearish divergence that's still developing on the four hour time frame, not to mention the fact that we have that big gap down below all the way down to 440, which I think is going to fill soon. All right. So one more pop and then a drop, or we just drop from here is what I am anticipating. I want to be as clear as possible. How do we know if we're going to get one more pop? Watch 452. If we break that, then there could be one more pop before the drop comes. If we're not going to get one more pop, watch 448. If we lose that first, then we're going to start sinking. That's the most easy and most simple way to be looking at this. Going back to the QQQ, it's basically identical as SPY. It's going to be dictated by NVIDIA's earnings. There could be one more pop coming to the triple Q to retest 388 and then a rejection back down to fill our gap and back down to 380. Or we could just reject from here and start cooling off on the RSI back down to 380. I'm anticipating that. In order to determine that, watch 382 as key support. If we lose 382, we turn bearish. If we break 387, we turn a little bit bullish, at least temporarily. Either we pop a little bit like this, then we start dropping, or we drop from here. Watch your levels for confirmation. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, except for Apple on my trading view charts. Uh, for Apple stock, I just want to call out that. I think Apple's going to do the same thing as the QQQ. We're going to eventually pull back to 185. First, we might get a pop first. It might pop back up to like the 190 range and then reject, or it could just sell off from here and start coming down to 185 by 
uh, I would say very close to Black Friday. Uh, so I'm anticipating some downside. I think we might cool off in a very healthy manner. But this is going to be a very healthy pullback for the markets before the December rally. I'm bullish for December, guys. I'm very bullish for December. I think we're going to see some major upside for the end of the year. But the market should cool off first before we get that. That's what I'm anticipating. A little healthy pullback before we continue. I'm going to go over just a couple of others very, very quickly. If we look at uh, Microsoft, Microsoft is once again looking a bit more bearish. Look for a rebound towards 370, then a rejection if it starts breaking below 364. We're going to be starting to drop towards 360. Watch that as support. We're starting to look a bit more bearish on Microsoft. So a pop and drop is very probable. On AMD, it's going to be dictated by NVIDIA's earnings. It could push a little higher for about 125 and then reject, or it could just reject from here. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those two. And that's a bearish divergence developing, but it's going to depend on NVIDIA's earnings. We'll see what NVIDIA brings for it. I do anticipate some downside. The VIX has a slight bullish divergence, but I don't really trust it yet because it's very oversold in my opinion. I think that it's due for a bounce soon, but right now there's no sign of it. So we're not going to assume it's just yet. We're just going to be watching and waiting to see. The dollar is continuing to sink. We'll be watching if 103.5 holds. That's going to be very important. Coinbase is approaching 100 as resistance. If we reject off 100, we could be retracing towards 95. If we hold this, there could be like one more push up for about 102.5 to 105, and then we reject. But I anticipate some downside as well. And as a bearish divergence, uh, it's still uptrending, but the bearish divergence may play out later. So either it pops a bit more and rejects off like 102 to 105, or it just rejects from here and gets a very healthy sell off. On Google stock, we have a bearish divergence that has developed on the chart right over here. It's starting to pull back a little bit. We could get one more push from 138 to 140 then rejection, or we could just reject from here and start sinking towards 133.5. So we're going to be watching this very carefully. If we get one more pop and then a drop, or if we just drop from here, and we're going to be watching this gap down here towards 133.5. Uh, we're likely going to fill that gap soon. Uh, I think that we either pop, try to get up to 138 again, then reject, or it just rejects from here and it comes down towards that level. If we lose 136 flat, I'm going to turn more bearish, and that's when we're going to come down to fill this gap at 133. If we break 138, then we could get one more push for 140 before rejecting. Like I said before, either we pop one more time and then reject to fill this gap, or we just reject from here. That's what I find very probable. Same thing on Amazon, it's starting to lose some momentum. It has this uh, bearish looking structure starting to develop. It looks like it might reverse soon. I think it's going to pop a little bit more. We could retest 147, if not 150, and then reject or reject from here. We'll be watching it very, very carefully. On Meta, if you look at Meta, this thing is still looking pretty decent on the daily, but we're approaching some critical resistance at 340. I, I think that we either retest 338 and reject or we retest. 340 and then reject. And I think that there's going to be some downside coming to Meta. Uh, I believe that it's had many green days in a row. It's been uptrending with almost no downside. And if you look at the four hour time frame, it's starting to lose momentum. So if this is a head and shoulders, we could just like pop a little bit and start dropping back down towards 326, or we push up a little higher and then reject. I still anticipate some downside. This could be a, even a head and shoulders on the four hour time frame, but I do anticipate the downside to come soon. All right, guys. So Look for either one more push up for Monday before the market starts to sell off, or the top could be in and the market may start selling off as soon as Monday. Either way, I see a sell off coming, and this is going to be a healthy pullback for the, you know a part of November because the market just needs to cool off a little bit, just a little bit more before the market starts to rally and push up very hard for December. The December rally is coming soon, and I still hold the same views I've had as before. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy some football. Do what you have to do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again, and peace out.